All of this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us, from Matthew chapter 1, beginning at the 22nd verse. Sunday marks the beginning of Advent, a liturgical season marked by expectancy, joy, and anticipation as we prepare to meet the Christ. In Advent, we ponder the mystery of the Incarnation, how God's Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. In lighting the candles of Advent on the Advent wreath, we find ourselves waiting once again for the world's true light, Jesus Christ, to be revealed. It's common to think of God's incarnation as an event that marks a drastic change in how God relates to the world. In this view, God was not present to humanity in quite the same way before Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. We see the incarnation as a time-bound event where a previously distant God drew near to us in Jesus Christ. I invite you to think differently about the incarnation during this season of Advent. The late Robert Farrar Capon reminds us that the beauty of the incarnation is that it reveals a mystery inherent to God's creation from beginning to end, a mystery manifested fully in Jesus Christ, yes. But in other words, the mystery of the incarnation is that God in Christ had been with us the whole time, closer to us than we are to ourselves. God has a mission and in and through the people of the Diocese of Texas, God's mission has a church. We are a missional people. We long to build new relationships outside the walls of our church buildings and to work for reconciliation in our communities. Rooted in a robust understanding then of the incarnation, mission has nothing to do with bringing Jesus to places where Jesus previously has not been, but instead rather we discover that Jesus that Jesus is in the places that God has always been present in our world, in our lives, in our relationships. No ounce of creation has ever been or ever will be left untouched by the presence of Christ. As we enter this holy season of Advent, then I invite you to ponder with me, how do we wait for someone who has been with us the whole time? A God who has never been more than a breath away. How do we wait for the one in whom we live, move, and have our being? If God is with us now, what exactly are we waiting for? We wait not for Jesus to arrive. We wait and said to behold the great truth that Jesus has never left. We wait for the scales to fall from our eyes so that we can proclaim with Simeon, my eyes have seen your salvation. We wait on our own acceptance of God's free grace offered. We do not wait for the Word to become flesh, but for our eyes to see that all flesh has always been and will always be an echo of God's living Word. We wait for our hearts to know that the one for whom we wait is the same Lord who never left.